Would you pay $69 million to own this picture? No? Welcome to the crazy world of NFT. NFT is going mainstream and it might become the first use case of blockchain even before DeFi. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an app for NFT. There will be two parts, one part on the blockchain and one part outside and it's quite interesting to understand how it all works together. Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Julian and on In The Blocks I teach blockchain development. There are many kind of NFTs, but the kind of NFT that made the news and sold for a ton of money were about digital art. If you own an NFT of a specific digital art, it means you own this art. Some people don't understand the value of this since everybody can copy the picture. But with physical art, it's exactly the same thing. Only one person can have the original painting of a great artist, but anybody can make copies of the original. The concept that is a bit hard to be accepted is the fact that we can have ownership of something completely non-physical. It will take time before the public see the value of this, but this is coming. If you want to understand NFTs, you need to understand the ERC721 standard. It defines how the smart contract of an NFT should work. I already did a video on ERC721. You can check it out if you don't know how ERC721 works. But in a nutshell, the big difference with ERC20 is that when you transfer a token, you need to know not only the address of the smart contract, but also the ID of the token. A single ERC721 smart contract manages several tokens, contrary to ERC20, where each smart contract manages one token. Next, let's move on to our NFT app. Our app will allow us to display an NFT in a web browser. Our app will have three parts, backend, frontend, and the NFT smart contract. When the user first uses our app, the frontend is loaded in the web browser. The frontend sends a request to the smart contract of the NFT to know the URL of the metadata. The metadata of an NFT is some extra info that is too big to be stored on the blockchain. So we only store a pointer of this info on the blockchain. The frontend gets this metadata URL and with it, it sends a request to the backend. The backend answers with the metadata of the token. That's a JSON document. In this JSON document, we also have the URL of the image of the NFT. This image can be stored on any server, but in our case, that's going to be on the same server as the metadata. So our frontend fetches the image from the server and display it to the user as well as the metadata. That's it for the architecture of the app. Next, we will code the backend. So the responsibility of our backend is to serve the metadata as well as the image of the NFT. So I've created a truffle project and in the backend folder, I have all the backend code. So most of the code of the server is in server.js. I use a framework that is called Koa and the metadata of the token is in tokens.json and the image of the NFT is in images. So we're going to open up some files. So first the server. So here, this is a standard server that is built with the Koa framework. If you don't know Koa, it's quite simple. It allows you to do a backend server very easily. So here we start the server and before we configure some stuff. So course it's to be able to access the backend from a different URL otherwise web browser will complain then this line this is to serve the image of our NFT and here is to define the different route so let's see the router file to understand what's happening okay so here we have a single route so we pass as a parameter the token ID then here we fetch tokens.json where we have all the metadata for all the different NFT and we extract the NFT that we're interested in. So context param token ID, this is basically what is passed here in the URL. So if you pass, for example, zero, then here it's, this is going to be zero. Then if we don't find the NFT, we return with a 400 not found. But if we find something, then we answer here in the result key with the JSON object. And after, let's have a look at what is this JSON object. So in tokens.json. So here, the metadata of a token has three fields, name, description, and image. This structure is imposed by the ERC721 standard. 
And so here the key is the token ID. And for the image, it's supposed to be the URL to the image. We're going to update this just after. Let's close the code of this. And we are going to deploy our backend on Heroku. If you never heard of Heroku, that's a service to easily deploy your app. And for our need, we can just use the free version. So you will need to create an account on Heroku. You also need to install the Heroku CLI. You also need to create a Git repo with Git in it. And then you need to add all the file to your Git repo. Let me see. All right. Then you need to commit because Heroku works with Git. Okay. After that, we are going to logging into Heroku. You're going to do Heroku logging. So I already did it. And after we're going to do Heroku create, so it's going to create a new app. And here it gives you the URL of the app. So uh, we are going to use this. So I'm going to copy this URL here. And then I'm going to open tokens JSON and we're going to paste the URL here. Okay. Let's close this and we are going to update our Git repo because we just made a modification. And next we are going to deploy our backend to Heroku. So for that, we're going to use Git. So Git push and the name of the repo of Heroku is just Heroku and our branch is master and it's going to trigger uh, oops, before I already push it to another app, so there's a problem of configuration here. Okay, I'm going to need to fix this. So uh, let me copy this URL here. Uh, then in the dot .git, I'm going to go in config, if I remember well. And we need to replace this. Uh, let me see. Okay, uh, it's limitless at all. Dot git. All right, let me close this. So now let's try again. Git push Heroku master. And this time it's working great. All right, and so it's telling us that now it's deployed. So we can actually check this. Uh, let me see, we can do a curl on this with an ID, for example, curl this of uh, zero and we should see a JSON. And yes, we can see our JSON, it's working. So that's it for our backend. Next, we are going to code our smart contracts. So I am at the root of the project. And if we go in contracts, we can see our smart contracts. So we just have one NFT dot sol. So here we import the ER721 implementation of Open Zeppelin, which is a very popular Solidity library. Then here we define our NFT. So we inherit from ERC721. Then in the constructor, we pass some arguments to ERC721. And here, so this is a mint function to create some new NFT. So only our admin can call it. And we call safe underscore safe mint. So this is provided by ERC721 of Open Zeppelin. And we need to pass it the recipient and the token ID. And after we implement, we increment the next token ID. And uh, we manage this variable ourselves in our smart contract. And very important, we also override underscore base URI. So this is another function defined by, by ERC721. And we need to give it the base URL of our server. So uh, here, this is not correct. Let me update this. So we're going to go in, uh, in backend in tokens.json and we're going to copy this. Okay, back to our contract. OK, 
okay and here uh, let's add a slash at the end very important because the rc721 implementation of open zeppelin when it's going to return the url of the metadata of a specific token it's going to take the base url and it's going to append the token id but if we don't put the forward slash the url will be incorrect okay so here that's it for our nft contract uh, briefly let's see the migration file so here we deploy the nft and after we mint an nft so that we have something to show so we're going to deploy the nft on the rinkby testnet so for that in your truffle config you need to add some stuff so first you need to install hd web provider then you have to put your mnemonic here then you take the first address generated by this mnemonic and you use the faucet of rinkby in order to have some testnet ether and after we are going to define a network here in the configuration and so you need to pass the mnemonic as well as the url to a rinkby eth node so you need to create a project in infra and you copy paste your url here and after zero one this means generate one address from this mnemonic and lastly we also have an important configuration here so that's for the front end but we will see this after okay so next we can run the deployment command so truffle migrate reset and network is going to be ring b it's going to deploy our nft okay our migration is finished our nft contract is deployed to ring b and next we're going to code the front end So in our front end, we are going to display the NFT to the user. So for that, I created some code in the front end folder. So this is going to be a React app and the code is in SRC. So something very important here is the contract directory. So in the previous step, when we deploy our NFT to the Rinkeby network, the Truffle framework created some JSON file here, including a JSON file for NFT with the deployment address inside. So that's how we're going to connect our front end to the smart contract. So first we are going to open ethereum.js. So that's how we connect to the blockchain. So here, very important, we build an object that connect to the NFT contract. Uh, and just above here, we are going to connect to MetaMask, the browser wallet. And after we are going to return the NFT object. And in app.js, that's where we have most of the action. So here, when this component loads for the first time, this will be executed. So first we get the NFT object then we call the token URI function and we pass it the token ID zero. So this is completely arbitrary. Of course, we can get any token ID we want. So we get this token URI. And after we use the Axios library, so that's a JavaScript library to do some HTTP request simply. And we're gonna send a HTTP get request with the token URI. So this is gonna be sent to our backend server. And so here we extract data. So this is coming from the Axios library. Oops, we don't need this. And after we are going to store the results, so this is gonna be the JSON metadata of the token. We're gonna to store it in the state of the component that we defined just before. So this is gonna be in token info. And after we are going to render the HTML here. And so it's gonna be quite simple. So the name of the token the description and then we use the HTML image element to display the image and our backend server is going to serve this image. 
Okay, so that's it for the front end code. So now we need to deploy it to a server. So we could actually have our back end serve the front end on Heroku, but there is a solution even more simple than this. There are some services that allow you to host some front end app in a very, very simple way. So we're going to use one of these services. So first, we're going to need to compile the front end. So we're going to run npm run build. It's going to create some static assets, so static HTML, etc., in the build folder. And we're going to drag and drop this into a hosting service. So I created an account on Netlify, which is one of these services for front end. And for what we need, the free tier is enough. So we go in sites, we scroll down. And at the very bottom, we can just drag and drop. So here I pull up my file explorer. So this is the code of our project, front end build. And here we're just going to drag and drop. And after it gives you the URL, you go there in another tab. And here you're going to see the pop up of MetaMask. Connect. And you make sure that you are on the Rinkby network. And boom, we have our NFT. Great. Now that you know how to create an NFT, can you make a $69 million like the artist Beeple? Here on this channel, we are developers. We may not have the best test for art, but we know how to code. You could use what we learned in this video to build a marketplace for NFT and maybe it will become the next Uniswap of the NFT world. I'm really curious, what is your favorite NFT project and why? Let me know in the comments down below. I will see you for another video. Bye.